Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Saturday Human Colony Hukalo webinar. It is Saturday, the 25th of August, 2018. And today, as our special guest, we have the channeler of Prime Creator, Susie Byler. She will be here talking about ascension symptoms and how to actively live your life, you know, uh, taking into account everything that's going on once you awaken. Um, but just to introduce everyone that's in the room, we have Elisa, we have uh, Kathleen, Christine, Dave, Don, Ian, mechanical guy, <laughs> Pamela, Reinhard, Selesh, Steve, Susie, and myself. And just to let you know, this is a Human Colony production. If you would like to become a member of Human Colony, you can go to hukalo.org and you can t t uh, type in forward slash webinar and become a member of Human Colony. And that just gives you access to all the nice programs that we have going on. Every Friday night, we have a free channeling class. You can join that by going to Human Colony free channeling class. You can find that on Facebook. So, Susie, I'm going to open up your thing. There you are. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Thanks so much for having me, Karen, and everyone else. Well, it's nice to have you here, and uh, where Jim uh, sends his regards to you. Oh, hi, Jim. Jim Charles. Jim Charles. Okay, so for the people that don't know you, why don't you give us a little bit of your background, how you first came into your awakening, and right up to where you are today. Just the, the short version, but, but definitely okay. <laughs> let us know. Yeah. I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so I grew up Mennonite in Pennsylvania. And for those of you who aren't familiar, Mennonite is uh, part of the Christian religion, um, similar to Amish in some ways, uh, but Mennonites have a very, uh, you can be ultra conservative or you can be very liberal. So we were more on the conservative side. Uh, I had, health issues since I was an infant. And uh, it was finally in my early 20s where I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome that I started seeking alternative treatments and holistic, you know, healing sort of things because Western medicine wasn't doing anything for me. And when I was 28, I started acupuncture and it was session number six and I was on the acupuncture table and I had, I had gone, you know, trying to heal myself from the chronic fatigue syndrome because I just couldn't believe that I would be 80 years old and still suffering. Like I just couldn't, I was like, no, that's not, no, <laughs> not acceptable. Yeah. So I was on the table and I had this remembering of the weekend before I was in nutrition school and one of my classmates was actually this woman, Jean, who I stayed at a clinic with for, for CFS. It was literally a CFS clinic that I stayed, at her, <laughs> stayed with her at. And she looked into my eyes and she said, Susie, you don't have CFS anymore. And I didn't not believe her, but I didn't necessarily believe her. I just heard what she said and I was like, okay. And then that Monday, I was on the acupuncture table and that flashed in my mind. Mm. And all of a sudden, everything shifted. The light bulb went on. And I knew she was right. And I was like, mm. I'm healed. Praise Jesus, I'm healed. You know, in my, <laughs> I was still Christian at that time and still very much in that um, understanding and belief system. And I was just, everything changed. I could feel it in every part of my being, every cell of my body. Did you, were you doing the acupuncture still being a Mennonite or had you then left? Or had you already sort of moved on from that? No, I hadn't moved on from that yet. Okay, okay. And, the, and acupuncture is accepted within the Mennonite uh, culture or? Um, I think it's medical enough mm. that yeah. it's okay. Okay. <laughs> And again, depending on what Mennonite you ask, you know. All right, okay. But I had started to become a little bit more free, a little bit more liberal, but I, I would have still definitely called myself a Christian. I would have used that label for myself for sure. Right. Do the Mennonites, do they, like the, the Pennsylvania Dutch, do they speak a different language or are they speaking straight English just for our, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, it's mostly English. There are a few uh, very conservative Mennonites who would speak 
Pennsylvania Dutch or, or German or, you know, a dialect of. Right. But mostly English. Okay, so I, I recognize something that you were saying because I know that when I was a little kid, the only thing I wanted to do was know God. That's it. And, and to this day, that's the only thing that I'm really concerned on. But I had this thing and what you said is the same thing I had. Like I couldn't conceive of the fact that I couldn't have a dialogue with the divine. And you were saying you couldn't conceive that this thing, like you, there was, I, I always say it now, like I just knew in my heart of hearts that that just wasn't true. And there was a part of me that remembered it enough yes. to just sort of push through it and out of even stubbornness, refuse to accept that as a answer. Like that to me was not the final answer. You exactly. know? There was a part of me, Karen, and I couldn't have identified it back then, but there was a part of me that knew yeah. this is not my life. Right. That yeah. part of me that knew was the part of me that kept seeking and pushing. Right. Yeah. Because I tried so many things and right. nothing had like truly set me free. Right. Yeah. Do, you, do you think it was the, the decision of like, no, this just isn't going to go. I'm not going to accept this. Do you think it was, I mean, there's, because I think that is a shift moment. I think there, because you shift a real, I think you shift your reality in the, in that moment where you say, I know that that's not true. Everyone's telling me this is true, but I, I'm not accepting it. And therefore something else has to present itself. I think. I think I wasn't accepting it because there was that subconscious knowing yeah that's what i mean yeah like pulling me yeah yeah cool so so you you all of a sudden were free of chronic fatigue you know it, it's very very much what jesus would say you are healed that's what that woman told you right <laughs> pretty much you know and you had to go oh i am okay i am yeah it was it was pretty it was sudden it in an instant Mm. Everything was shifted. And I had two weeks of just absolute bliss. I was on this high, you know, like mm. finally my life can work. You know, finally I can feel good in this body. You know, finally. I didn't have those thoughts back then, but that's essentially what I was feeling. Sure. So just two weeks of absolute bliss and wonder and beauty, and it was just magnificent. And then the hard work began. Yeah. Okay. Well, tell us what that was. No, <laughs> <laughs> so, we come in this life and there's so much programming mm. from our parents, from other lifetimes, from other realms in which we've traveled. You know, we pick up all this program, we accept it as if it's truth. And so I had to rewire my nervous system. I had to rewire my DNA, reconfigure everything, reprogram, repattern. And I'm still doing that. Sure. And, and it's a lot. Of work, yeah. This has been for me. Some people. Well, say, don't you agree though that things don't come to you like this has to be the lifetime that you were ready to do it? Do you know what I mean? Like it wouldn't come to you unless it was your moment to break break it down. Absolutely, it was like everything was aligned for that one moment to happen. Yeah, cool. So, so you went from that, and then I guess it, as you became aware all your belief systems started to really shift. You had to take a good look at what you were believing and why, and where did you go from there? <laughs> where did that go from that moment of awakening? Well, I think, I mean, you, you, yeah, I mean, it's your story. So I, I just tried to, to uh, get us yeah. to the next uh, step for, to, to segue into that. But what, what would you say would be the next the next chapter then, what happened next? So the next chapter is almost 14 years now of inner work. Like when I say inner work, I'm talking about really going deep and seeing myself, seeing mm. my light, seeing my shadow mm. and clearing and releasing, transmuting the things that aren't me and right. finding more and more of myself. Yeah. And it, it's uncomfortable. A lot of the times, you know, it's not an easy journey. Yeah. But in my understanding, it is what's required if we really, truly want to free ourselves. 
Yeah. And the last thing that my mentor ever said to me, two simple words, free yourself. Mm. And those words reverberate in my being to this day. Mm. Like if there's something that I'm going through, I just, that comes back to me, free yourself. I, I wanted to, uh, there was a, I was watching, I was watching a TV show, which I don't watch a lot of TV, but I was watching this TV show and there was a woman and she was complaining to a rabbi and he was dying and his, but he was a counselor and she was complaining to the rabbi that she had done everything in her faith correctly, that she had lived this exemplary life. And, but she was, she couldn't understand how life could be unfair, how life could be hard, how life could be cruel. And the rabbi said to her, there is nowhere in any text, in any teaching that ever tells you that things won't be hard, that things won't be difficult, but that is in those moments that we transform the most. And when we open up and we awaken, it kind of, it's like we almost say to the universe, okay, <laughs> Hit me, hit me with your best shot. You know, I'm ready to look at it all. And that's that's what you said that you've been doing. And you're right, it's hard. And I guess that's what you're teaching now to people. We teach what we are also learning, you know. I, look, I don't want to think that it's hard, mm. but I don't want to give people a spiritual bypass either. It can and be hard. It's okay for it to be hard. It's okay for you to be hard. It's yeah. okay for you to feel the struggle of it. It's okay for you to feel the depths and have to move through the grief and the anger and the, you know, all of that is part of it. Right. And it's all beautiful and it's, and it's okay. Yeah. And if you feel like you've been in constant struggle and it hasn't been easy your whole life, that's okay. That yeah. means you have like a big soul with a big mission. Not that anyone has a small soul or a small mission, but just to try to find words to explain. Yeah. You know, well, there's a lot of people who haven't had the haven't been brave enough to wake up yet because maybe, you know, they're not ready to deal with the stuff. Yeah, it's not ready. Yeah. yeah. So, so you're a holistic health practitioner. Uh, you, you, your channel, you do all. So, what are your modalities that you work with? What is your primary way that you're working? Uh, the primary way is through spiritual guidance and channeling. So I don't call it life coaching, but there are elements of coaching within it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's mostly helping people really get to the, the soul. Yeah. What I, what I do best is I connect with people at the soul level through their hearts and to, to shine back for them, to mirror for them their beauty, their soul mission, mm -hmm. their powerful their powerfulness <laughs> there's got to be a better word for that <laughs> their power yeah. <laughs> and and to help them see themselves right and I do that with the the coaching and the channeling and the okay. guidance um, okay. some other modalities are didgeridoo deep sound healing and that's using my voice with toning and my didgeridoo and that helps to to bridge the right and left hemisphere of the brain and bring heaven to earth in the physical body and to balance the masculine and feminine within the body. It's just a beautiful, like the voice is the celestial part and then the dig is this primal, you know, masculine ground. First groundy. Yeah, it helps to, the you know, the reverberation. I hold it right up next to people's bodies, the didgeridoo, and the reverberation oh. really helps to uh, loosen up anything that's stagnant within in, in the body, anything that the person's ready to release. It just helps to, you know, loosen that up and put that. That's awesome. So when you're doing it, so w when you're working with people, um, what is there, what is there, are they having visceral experiences? Is it, is it more mental? What's going on? All kinds. Uh, people see colors. They have visions. They they feel. They can feel things shift in their body. They can feel their heart opening. Um, they can feel the light coming in. It's, it depends on how the person's wired and how they right how they experience information. Yeah. So so what do you see then as your mission as a as a practitioner? What is your mission here? You help people find theirs, but what is your mission? <laughs> Why are you laughing? That's a good question. <laughs> I love it. My sole mission is to restore heaven on earth. Okay. So for me, what that means is 
not just in my own little world and my own little bubble, mm. but to see this planet come back to her original state. Yeah. Got, got a little messed up here, we could say. <laughs> and we've gone in some directions. What's that? I said we've gone in some diverse directions. That's, that's for right. sure. <laughs> yeah. So the, the essence of that is harmony for all life on this planet and then beyond. But because of the role we play on this planet as a as an example for the rest of the solar system and the galaxy and the universe, um, we have to we have to get this in order first. Yes, we do. I agree with you. We human colony when it first started was very much focused on, you know, a possible human colony in in the stars. But recently, we've taken the decision that we really need to take care of our own human colony here first you know, get ourselves uh, get ourselves together. Um, I do you want to talk about how did you how did you start channeling? What was that like for you? Was that can, yeah. you, can you give? Yeah, that's always that's a great. Story. Yeah, I love this story. Okay. So I had um, Max, my partner and I, we were at Mount Shasta in California, and we had stopped on our way back home to see a client. And she has a son who I would call an avatar. This okay. is a being who, um, he's in his young 20s, failure to thrive, about 35 pounds, can't really do anything for himself. But this being, what he does energetically is so powerful and so amazing. Wow. And so Max and I sat with this man for hours. We just sat in his presence and we were speaking to you know, telepathically and he was telling me things and was activating us and we were crying this huge orb showed up in, in some pictures that his mom took of us oh wow it was just really amazing we've never experienced anything like it and i've experienced some pretty intense deep things along this journey and we were just in complete awe of this being well we got home and max asked me something like why why does everything feel like it's complete and i started answering him this in-depth answer telling him all this information that clearly wasn't my knowing like mm -hmm. i didn't know all the stuff i was saying and so i was like who is this <laughs> and the answer came through right away right away prime creator i was like oh, wow. okay so then we're like, I'm creator, you know, because <laughs> I didn't grow up in a world of channeling in my spiritual path. Even I didn't really tune into many channeled messages or anything like that. So I didn't have much exposure to right. the whole world of channeling. Right. It was pretty, pretty pure and pretty fresh when it spontaneously happened. Mm. And so we then began to say, well, we can really get answers about a lot of things. Let's ask some questions. And I just felt the guidance to just put it out there. So I put it on my YouTube channel and that's kind of how it all started. Yeah. But I do want to say that earlier in my spiritual journey, this was like 10 years into my spiritual journey. Hmm. I had done so much purifying work, that inner work that I mentioned before. Right. I had done so much work to purify myself and I had even put around my apartment in the early years, these sticky notes that said things like, I am a channel of love. I am pure love. I am a channel for love and light. I am a pure channel. Like just all of these affirmations that I was making that at the time I really didn't fully know what I was saying or affirming. Well, them. you were not only affirming, but you were evoking at the same Apparently. time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I wanted to say something to you um, and now it's flying out of my head, but no, never mind. Go keep going. Go you don't come back. Yeah. But, but you did, you invoked it, you affirmed it. You, 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 you became open without even knowing, Oh, I know what I wanted to say to you is that we do a lot of teaching of channeling. And the one thing that I teach is that the question this and this is what actually made us get in contact with each other is that the questions are the key to the channeling the questions drive the channeling 
And the better the question, the better the answer. And a lot of people don't quite know it, but I believe in my own personal belief system. And I've been in contact with my guys since I was five. I didn't start channeling them because I had no need to channel them because I was always just talking to them. But the questions, it was questions I had. And that it's the universe desiring to answer you that, that pulls that pulls the answers out. And then as people like you who were who were prepared yourself, you know, you were you were a vessel ready to, you know, have the information poured through. But the questions are so so important is that your that's your experience I'm, I'm pretty sure it brings back when you say having something poured through you it brings back a memory of something that i did before that probably like six months or something before that where uh i was in this ceremony and someone had a vision of this picture of gold being poured into my head mm. <laughs> that just, that just, well, that's my psychicness. That's my psychicness. I do that all the time. Actually, it's true when I'm because I am a psychic and when I will give readings to people, I'll say it's just like if something happened and the person will go, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. <laughs> so but but I think I what I pick up for you is that on the level on the unconscious level, but the greater consciousness level, the higher conscious level, you were preparing yourself and you were even self-initiating, -initi you know, and, and it, it came over a period of time, but then there was one moment when, you know, yeah. came through. I tend to have these like aligned moments where it's like, Ooh. yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> They're few and far between, but they are precious. Well, I, I, I'm happy for you that you had a partner that supported you in what you were doing and understood and, you know, so that you, there wasn't that moment of doubt, but you could just allow and, and expand in that way. Yeah. yeah. Very blessed for sure. For sure. Does anyone, there's a question. Um, actually, there was a couple of people in the, in the YouTube chat that are talking about that they have had and or do have um, chronic fatigue syndrome at this moment. Mm. Do you have any recommendations for the one woman saying she says she's been healing chronic fatigue and chronic EBV, and I'm not sure what that is. Uh, irritable bowel, I think. No, that would be irritable yeah. bowel. E E with is an Edward. Something oh. maybe you can EBV. I don't know what that is. Jess, why don't you type what EBV is in the chat for us? And there's a little delay, but. Maybe you can give some. Yeah. Uh, what I tend to see. Epstein Barr, I was just told. Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what I was trying to think of. Thank you. Uh, what I tend to see with people with chronic fatigue, adrenal burnout, is that they are givers and they're out of balance with giving. giving. And um, can we maybe mute that one? Karen? Sorry, say that one more time. Oh, was that you? Yeah, that was me. I'm, I, I do apologize. That was me. <laughs> I put my desk down so I could sit down. I thought I had muted myself. I'm sorry. So start again. Sorry for that. What I tend to see with people with adrenal burnout, chronic fatigue type, uh, or, yeah. or even the um, autoimmune diseases is that we tend to be out of balance with the time. And at a very deep spiritual level, there's something that wants to be birthed through you. There's something that wants to be expressed through you from your soul level. And it's not necessarily a conscience, conscious resistance of that. But on some level, there's like this resistance or this block that prevents you from truly expanding into that soul level potential and so the energy gets stuck the adrenal glands are a very spiritual gland they're very highly uh, attuned and um, I don't know if I'm saying this correctly but they're very uh, they're able to be attuned to subtle frequencies they have that connection to subtle frequencies and so if they're oppressed, shut down, blocked in any way, that 
that expression from the soul can't come through as easily. Mm. I'm trying to find a, a good way to say it because I don't feel like I'm expressing it. Well, quite the basically the person is in some way out of sort of I, not out of alignment, but they're out, they're not attuned to the frequency that would allow them to be healthy. And by being out of that, to, by being sort of in a different frequency, they need to change a frequency then. And the frequency uh, that allows them to express and birth the thing it's is born from the right the, frequency, I guess. The connection to their soul. So this isn't always mm -hmm. true, uh, but I tend to see it with a lot of people with this diagnosis that there is that, that soul level frequency that wants to be expressed through them. And you know, just because we're not taught how to connect to our soul, you know, right. that's not part of the cultural program. We're not taught how to go inward and listen to our still small voice. Right. But that is what can be expressed through you. And it there is something with the adrenal gland in specific that has the ability to connect with that. And if the adrenal gland's not hooked in, not connected with that soul frequency it can very quickly be burnt out on a, and on a spiritual level, I'm talking. And then, of course, you experience the physical symptoms of all of that. Mm. So what is your recommendation then for something that someone can do in that? In that? Yeah. Um, on, a, on a spiritual level, to mm. start tuning in, find a practitioner to help you, or if you can do it on yourself, that's, do it you know, on your own, that's fine. Um, but take the time to tune in, get quiet, and do a lot of self-care. And then on the practical level, organic food, pure food, hydration, um, you know, taking the, the, the liquid minerals and electrolytes, you know, the things that will support the physical body in healing. Because it's not, for most, you know, my experience was kind of unique. For most people it is the healing takes place over time as you build the, the physical body back up, as right. you build up the adrenal glands and the energy within your system. But if you don't have that connection with your adrenal gland and your soul, then that's where there's a disconnect and you can do everything physical to support your body and never experience the change that you want. Well, it's always mind, body, spirit. It's always the sort of, you know, three-pronged approach and in the spiritual world sometimes we ignore the physical body and vice versa you know and, and we don't have that full full approach so because you were talking about diet and things like that that's something i'm also interested in. i also have a nutrition background and i've worked for nutrition companies my entire uh my entire working life but why don't you talk about what kind of because it's i you can eat in any way you want and still be spiritual there's no doubt about it but there are foods that, you know, if you look at Ayurveda, that can be considered tamasic, which is a sort of lower energy. You can have something that's rajasic, which is in a sort of aggressive, stimulating energy. And you can have things that are called sattvic, which are a more pure, subtle, work on a subtle level, you know, and, 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 have, a, and have a higher energy. How, how would you describe that kind of eating and the necessity for it and how would people know when they really need to shift something because you talk to people about what they're eating and they, you know, they grab their they grab some of their food a little tighter <laughs> <laughs> well first to give kind of like an overall perspective sure, uh, sure. There, there are different phases spiritually speaking with eating uh, right most people are you know they start out eat, eating the junk eating the standard american diet for example and then they move into more purity. Maybe they eat fewer animals. They start eating organic. Um, and, and then there's sort of like this maintenance phase where they do that for a while. And maybe they go raw. Maybe they go vegan, whatever it is. And then there's this next phase where most people don't have much of a mastery. And that's the ability to eat anything and transmute it. Mm. The only problem I have with that phase is we're still working with supply and demand. So if you're eating a donut, for example, and you're like, oh, but I'm transmuting all of it. Yeah, well, you're also, though, contributing to that system of supply and demand. So that's just my orientation. That's my judgment about it. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then from another perspective, the physical body will tell us what we need. So our physical bodies are always giving us cues. They're always giving us clues as to what we need. And it's our job to listen. Most times, like you said, a lot of spiritual people tend to ignore the physical. Yeah. And that's, that's a generalization, I understand. Um, but there's a lot of truth in that. Well, I'll say that I will say not as much this generation. It's changed when, but say to say in the eighties and the seventies, the eighties, but they did, they really did. Yeah. They very much did. So I, I can say that in the past, but I will say the younger generation is much more conscious on a holistic, fully holistic approach. But, but, but anybody true. above 50, they, they tend to, well, that's true. They really did. They ignored it. They didn't yeah. even think about it. They didn't consider it to be joined. Hmm. Because back then there, there wasn't as much contamination. With exactly. It. Didn't exactly. Talk about it as much. Right. As, as we do now. You exactly. Know, really so there's the growth. <laughs> well, there's definitely big growth. Yeah. 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 So our bodies are always telling us it's our job to listen to what our bodies are saying. You know, if you have indigestion, that's a signal from your body. If yeah. you're burping all the time, that's a signal from your body. If you have constipation, that's a signal from your body. It's always telling you um, this is working for you or not working for you. Right. And then, as we mentioned before, it's always multi level. So maybe you're constipated because you're holding on. It's not because of the food you're eating. So there's all these inquiries that we have to ask, you know, it's not always just, oh, the food you're, the food you're eating isn't working for you. That's why you're having this symptom. You may be having the symptom because of multiple layers of things. Yeah. Either yeah. way, our bodies are always speaking to us. It's right. our job to listen and to start learning how to decipher those messages so that we can make decisions that support the physical body. Right. So we were talking what the theme of our talk today is everyday tools to assist you or to help you with your ascension journey. So what, what would you, what would you start with and, and how would you approach this conversation in this way? Yeah. Well, <laughs> in overall perspective, again, I have to pull back and give the overall picture, the big picture is that I have a very human centric, view of ascension you might say so a lot of people i see with this view of ascension of like going up and out kind of it's just like okay we're gonna go into the stars and you know however they perceive it yeah my view is that we're already connected to all of that we took human forms to bring that information here to this planet and so in order to thrive through our ascension journey we need to put a lot of our focus on our human aspect and cultivating and developing the mastery of being human. Yes. Because we already have those connections. We're already encoded with all of the star language and the, the beautiful light codes from this planet and the beautiful love codes from that galaxy. And we already have all of that. Mm. We've been doing that journey for eons of time. We're here right now. A lot of people, at least that I see, because I work with super sensitive empaths, they want to do that escape thing that that's sometimes very subtle. Yeah. But they want to, you know, they'd rather hang out in this energy over here because it feels better. It's hard to be human. It's hard to be in this density. And so we'd much rather think of Ascension as like, oh, getting to, you know, expand up and out from this planet and go somewhere else, perhaps. Hmm. My thing is bring it all here. Right. <laughs> Ground well, yeah. here great it here grounding and and assimilating and and integrating and then transmuting as you said it's the the alchemical uh transmutation of everything that we are so that we can really be who we are like reveal our truest self is that what you're yeah bringing all of that into our human reality because right. we're much more than humans, as you all know. We're much more than what we, what you see here in this skin suit. Mm. But in order to be that, we do have to learn how to be here. We have to learn how to integrate those higher frequencies into the human body so that we're integrating it also with Gaia. Because we came here on this planet for a reason and a purpose. 
Yeah. It's not random. It's not by accident. It's not a mistake. It's not a mistake. (laughs) Here it's because your soul chose to be here and you were one of the lucky ones that got in somehow. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. People are trying to get out, but but there's probably a lot of people are trying to get in. So, so where would you start then Susie? I mean, what is the, I guess, is there like an, a self-evaluation that you need to do with yourself, you know, sort of a good, honest talking to of, hey, do you know what I mean? Like, how do you, because I, th- I think that the reason I'm saying that is sort of sometimes when you open up to your spiritual side, the first thing you think is, I'm a star seed, I'm this, I'm this, get me out of here. How do I get out? And you're saying just the opposite. You're saying you are already those things, yes. But you are 100% at this moment human. You are dialed into this planet, and your job is to learn how to be here. Yeah. As one of my favorite, Rez Ramda says, be here now. Be here now. You know, the take care of yourself now. Yeah. The question I would give you to ask yourself is what mastery am I here for? Hmm. What am I here to really master? Because You've mastered it in other realms, other dimensions, other places, however you understand it. But if you're in this density, there's something for you to master here. Mm. So what is it that I'm here to master? You could ask yourself that question and see what comes through, see what comes up. And that's, that can be like the beginning of also understanding what your soul is here to do. Because that's it's deeply, it's the same thing. It's deeply connected. Right. It's your, it's your dharma, your your soul yes. journey. So oh. how do you, so how do you have people do that? Do they do that through meditation? Is that what something with with the channeling? How does that work? With yeah, that's channeling? something that the channeling can bring forth. And right. you know, depending on how how well I know the person or how um, open and available they make themselves to me, I can I can see that without channeling. Uh, so it just it depends, but the channeling can be very helpful to bring some of that information forward. Right, right. So as a channel, um, what do you find because you're channeling Prime Creator? What is Prime Creator's goal? Also, the goal is to help to assist you to bring heaven to earth. Is that the uh, <laughs> is that the goal? <laughs> the goal is love and light. Okay. And I know how trite that sounds in the spiritual. Yeah. I know. Get it. No, Trust it doesn't me. sound right. It's a big thing. Love and light is 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 big, considering where you know someone turned the lights off a long time ago. You know, we're I, turning I, them on point by point, prick by prick. Yeah. The world is lightening up. And if we can do that in a loving way, and look, I'm as a fiery person, I'm working on that one. Believe you me, if we if we can bring the love, if we can bring the light in a loving way, that's the ultimate goal. If we have to put it in terms of, you know, having a goal, that's how I would describe it. Yeah. Because so much, as you know, so much is being illuminated right now on this planet. Everything is coming into the light. And it's not necessarily in the most loving way. It's not necessarily in the most graceful way. So if there can be some of us on this planet who can bring the love to it. Yeah. That goes a long way in the alchemical process of what we're shifting here. On the I'm, I'm thinking maybe now is a good time if anyone has a question for Susie about maybe something that they're personally struggling with that, you know, in this process, something yeah. that they're having a hard time reconciling within themselves or something that's coming up for you that you would like some guidance on. If you do have a question about it, you can type it in the chat because I think that would be this is right up your, this is right in the subject line and, and right up your alley. Yeah. So I, I have a question, if, yeah. if I may, because yeah. this is something that is, is, uh, is, is very active for me in this moment. And Christine, let me, is that I am, um, I am actively, which I'll just say this, for the longest time we were talking about in the spiritual world, don't push against anything, don't, uh, speak out against things, allow, allow, allow. And I I had a, a little bit of a shift in that, and I thought, well, if we're just only allowing, we're also not, we're not 
taking action in things that need to be addressed. We are not actively, how do you want to say it? We're not actively uh, discussing things that maybe need to be discussed so that they can be grounded, so that it's not just everybody floating off into never, never land, yeah. but, but actually having, because if we say we want to create this world that we want, yeah. You know, yeah, I know. We, I know. We focus on what we want. I, I agree with that, and we take action towards it. But there are moments where we can also say no to something for a good reason. You know, because it's the right thing, because it's the necessary thing. This is such a huge question, Karen. I know. I, I want to ask the big question. You want the big questions, don't you? <laughs> yes. And I have to be honest with you. I'm not fully integrated with this one myself. Mm -hmm. Um, well, neither am I. That's why I'm asking the question. <laughs> yeah. I think so. there is a time and a place. And we all play different roles. And mm -hmm. our roles can shift from time to time. Right. So for me personally, my role right now is to stay focused on right. the thing that I want to see happen on the planet. Right. And that can also include bringing up discussion. But the difference is how you are centered in your body, in your spirit, in your emotional field with right. what you're bringing up to discuss. Right. Because if you allow an emotional charge to take yeah. over the discussion, to, to pull you out of center, then we're doing it wrong. No, I agree with you there. Because, But this, this is not emotionally charged a question because I, I did have the emotional charge and that's when I said, whoa, I have to step back from this, but it didn't negate the necessity or the need kind of like the me too movement has been. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. but this is the sort of me too within the spiritual world movement, <laughs> but not in the same subject matter, but on a different subject on just sort of how ungrounded the spiritual world has become. Um, and that for me, because I, I take my role as a teacher so very seriously, I think it is within my uh, responsibility to guide and to make statements that can not only guide in the way that is possible, but that sort of can at the same time say, you know what, this is not really the direction we wanna be going. So that's the, that's the, uh, that's the, 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 how do you say the nuance of the discussion yes. is what I'm seeking so that it, it's not me just going, no, that's wrong, <laughs> but that it's, it's still coming from that love place and that place of saying, hey, we need to guidance hmm? saying, Hey, we need to look at this. Yes. Yeah. This is a relevant issue that we need to discuss and, and bring our alchemy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's very interesting that you brought this up, Karen, because personally, I'm working on integrating my fire, which is an aspect of myself that I've, I've, to be honest, I've been scared of. I've been, I've been holding it back. But mm. my fire does have some things to say mm. about that, that aren't working in this world. Well, I think there is a fire of that. I, I we talked about Kevin Moore, and uh, and one of the things that because I did a channeling on his show months ago. And within a short period of time, I did another channeling on uh, Ruben Langdon's show. And the thing that my channel came out and said is, this is the time for action. This is the time. We've been talking and talking and talking so much about the direction of the spiritual world, but there are so many things now that we have to start standing up. And, and as a light worker community yes. leading the charge yes. Yes. towards what we say that we want. And yes. sometimes that is saying also what we really don't want, you know, and, and whether and it can span many different avenues. So I'm glad to hear that you also have that because I think we, we get into this idea of, oh, I'm spiritual, love and light. Yeah, it's not, sugar doesn't melt in my mouth anymore. I, I can't, I can't uh, say anything that's not 
just agreeing and being sweet. Right. Okay. <laughs> it's not all about just acceptance and allowing. That's a big exactly. part of it because there is something that shifts in us when we accept and allow, but mm -hmm. there's also that standing up for what we're creating, that standing up for what we're shifting, what we're moving towards. And that is important. The action. Yeah. The action is important. I always think about it as like, if we are having a baby and you talked about something being birthed, Yeah. how much do you nurture and protect yeah. like the mama bear, that baby? And how much labor yeah. do you go through to bring through that baby into the world? Yes. You're not just lying there with your feet in the stirrups and the baby slides out. Like well, you're unless you're one of those freak women that everyone hates. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would also yeah. love to bring in the concept of the harmonized matrix into mm. the Oh, please explain that. Concept. This is something that Prime Creator introduced me to. Mm. This is the idea that on this planet now, the light workers have been creating for a while something called the harmonized matrix, which is different than the old matrix that we have. The old matrix is, you know, the ball, the Illuminati, what have you, they set this thing up and we have to function within this matrix where things clash and things don't work and, you know, it's their way or no way. In the harmonized matrix, now there's room for us, the light workers, to come in and birth our creation into the matrix, birth our creations on the planet Earth. And we it's done in a way where there's harmony so that all the other stuff can exist if it still chooses to exist. But now we have a platform. We have a, and I'm using my interpretation here a little bit to be fair. Now we have a place where we can birth our creations and it doesn't have to be in opposition to anything. Right. And stand alone and still be within harmony and be part of the whole. Because yeah. I, I do understand that th having the option is, you know, just like just like we've seen with organic food, the more people that choose it, the more available it becomes, the more it becomes the norm. We're yeah. choosing with our energy, our energetic dollars, but also our desire and our energy. And that's she drinks her green juice. But, you know, as we, <laughs> as we uh, as we choose that, that before where the option was quite small now it's grown and grown and grown to now it's it's reached a critical mass that it is in the consciousness of every human being and it is a definite choice between do i want this or do i not want that and there isn't this huge dilemma it's just do you want this or do you want that choose yeah like take the judgment out of it yeah and just 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 to have the option and we have to birth those options and sometimes in the birthing of them like you said in the bringing up of them we do have to segregate it off and protect it, allow it to grow and to be nurtured and to come up so that at one moment it does become standard. Like, yeah. like what we've seen happen with gay marriage, for instance. You know, I live in the Netherlands. It's not gay marriage. It is just marriage. You know, and which I think is so beautiful. When I first moved here, it had been already been passed. I've been here 18 years and it had already been passed for 10 years. So children being born into this country, it's just marriage. You know, they don't even know the struggle that it took to get there. Isn't that a lovely thing? Yeah. I love that. It's gonna bring tears to my eyes. Yeah. I'm so, so yeah, and I, yeah. But but the but the but the groundwork and the foundation laying of the people that made that possible had to happen. And I think that that's where we are sort of in the spiritual world now, where there is still a lot of things that take will take effort. They will take sacrifice. They will take determination and they will take standing your ground and holding, you know, fighting, not, I don't want to say fighting a good fight, but, but how do you say staying the course and yeah. you know, not losing heart. And then those things will also be birthed into this world. And then, then children being born will never have ha known that there was anything other. Isn't that lovely when you just know that that's just the way it is. I love that. When I hear a kid say, huh, that's just the way it is. It's normal. They'll say, I think it's great. And we did our job. Yeah, we did our job. So there's some, so thank you so much for that answer. Did you have anything more on that or? There's more I could say, but I think we can be complete. Move on. 
Okay. Um, let's see. There, uh, someone in the chat had a question. Christine, you had a question? Or did you remember your question? Well, Dave answered it for me. <clears throat> Mine was on, lately I've been having uh, more trouble falling asleep at night. My thoughts start going like crazy. So I put on YouTube uh, real deep subjects like what is matter or <laughs> hoping it'll bore me to death and make my brain shut down. But um, <laughs> Dave was telling me to take a walk at night. The, the problem with that is when I take a walk, the dogs come along and two cats want to follow too. So I'm more like a guardian to make sure they're all taken care of. So, uh, are we speaking with Pamela or Christine? Christine. 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 Um, what I'm getting for you uh, is to work with breathing when you lie down in your bed at night. To work with deep breathing through your belly, because your mind is activated because there's something that wants to come through to you. There's something that wants to get your attention and, and then come through you. Um, but it's not going to work through the mind. But that's the only way that right now your body knows what to do. So I'm suggesting deep breathing through the belly with the intention to open up to the message that wants to come through for you. Well, I am doing good. I am um, wrestling with... Uh, little imperfections throughout my life as a child and as a, a young adult and so on and so forth. But <laughs> I'm wondering what am I supposed to do rehashing all this? <laughs> so I guess it is, is being non non-judgmental and um, accepting the flaws and let's go on. <laughs> bring the, bring the love into it, Christine, as you breathe deeply through your belly and we can just uh -huh. do this together right now. All of us breathe through your belly. And we'll just ask the love be activated in our hearts to bring love into all parts of our childhoods, all parts of our life, all past lives, all dimensions, all realms and realities, bringing love from our hearts, from our souls, into our bodies, bringing love into every part of us that's been wounded, bringing love to our doubts, bringing love to our fears, bringing love to ourselves. How amazing that you've been able to be on this journey. How amazing that your soul has incarnated into human form. Let's bring love to that. Breathing deeply through your belly, allowing more and more love to pour through your body. Bringing love to our minds, acknowledging the ego, acknowledging the mind. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the roles that you play. Allowing more and more love to flow through your body. And as we go to bed at night to sleep, asking ourselves to remember this moment where love pours through our body, relaxes our mind, relaxes our body, and allows us to stay present with the sleep moment so that we can rejuvenate at night and honor the human body. Thank you for receiving that, Christine. How do you feel? I think I'll go swimming at night instead of taking a walk. <laughs> no. I feel more relaxed. Thank you. Thank you. I feel more relaxed too. That was great. Um, Caitlin has a question for you. Caitlin, do you want to go ahead? Maybe I... Did I say Catalin? Sorry, I called him Caitlin. Catalin, sorry. Catalin. Can you unmute or? On a second. Yeah, I can oh, there you now. go. Oh, there you go. You got it. Perfect. You got it. Perfect. 
Yeah, um, I have a question for Susie. Um, in her experience, um, how if if you clean your um, so let's talk about me. If I clean the emotional garbage uh, through meditation and some physical exercises, and if I stop um, feeding uh, from material matter uh would the uh, physical body would would reset and uh, start uh, getting its energy from god energy universal energy are you talking are you about talking about becoming breatharian, becoming breatharian? I, i'm not talking about the britannia i'm following just um my the a natural course of uh, body healing and emotional healing. And um, I don't know where it goes. So I'm kind of like asking uh, if this could be um, resetting uh, eating material food and shifting uh, through your self energy, let's say, so self sustainability. You are definitely. You are definitely. I'm getting a really, getting a really strong. Catalan, I'm going to see why she's talking. Yes, yes. Okay, go ahead. You are definitely going through a rebirthing. You are resetting yourselves, your cells, sorry, yourselves too. <laughs> You're reconfiguring your DNA. So yes, it is a reset. And you may find for a period of time that you're not too interested in physical food. Um, but then there may come a time again where you want to eat more food again and maybe even more variety than you've been used to. Does that resonate, Catalan? Yes. Yeah. Let me... Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, so, uh, as I said, I I don't know where it goes. I... I'm, I feel I don't eat too much. I um, I get rid of the energy of the hunger because it was um, that was the first sign sign of um, like recognizing the hunger energy, and I associated the hunger energy with uh, with a regular lack of energy. So um, when I healed that and it's still a, a ongoing process i saw that really the, the body doesn't really need that much food and um, i saw that actually uh, when i eat something else or something i actually enjoy what i eat and i don't stuff my body but um, it was a little bit unclear where this would go because uh, I, I could imagine where it would go i mean you know it's easy for me to be metaphysical <clears throat> but um, I just wanted to um, you know like validate or um, share some experience or ask a question about that where I feel it's going is deeper into your soul so even though you are typically metaphysical as you mentioned it will be able you'll be able to bring forth something of more clarity that will be useful to your human aspect. So hopefully this is making sense. Um, let me see if I can say it a bit better. The healing that you've gone through has stripped away a, a layer that's prevented you from accessing some deeper things within yourself. So a lot of your metaphysical journey has been sort of like out here looking, looking external and now it will be, you'll be able to look more internal and bring forth more soul information through your human aspect. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Um, well, I'm, I'm kind of trying to take control of my body, if I can say so, not in the control, like control in alignment way. So uh, I, I, it's something really, really new. I have never seen people doing this uh, sometimes it's really harsh uh, I mean it was harsh now I'm much more um, at ease <clears throat> with my um, 
my food and uh, as you said i uh, um eat only what i uh, like or let's say only what my body likes and i don't overeat uh, um and probably there's a next step um, after i'm getting more into my energy um probably is, there's another next step but uh, yeah the next yeah. Step, the next step for you catalyst is just to let it unfold you're, you're yeah, you go, okay. so like okay what is this going to mean what is this going to be just allow it to unfold continue to take the time with your inner self and your inner workings and your soul and and let it let's you know just see what comes out you don't have to know the whole the whole thing right now well um uh, yes i agree uh, i i don't want to get really you know crazy about that uh, right now uh, in this uh, session now um but uh, i am expecting not i'm expecting also expecting but allowing um some more subtle energies to come and to sustain um everything that i am you know, especially in the physical form so i'm 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 like my eyes are open you know and uh, while i'm clearing my uh, stuff that uh, was accumulated in the physical body and because um, i saw it that and i'm in my 50s now and uh, things are really you know there's no joke anymore i mean there's no joke around you're done or you're done <laughs> if you don't do the, the 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 job you're done and me i can't afford that and i relate very much with uh, how uh, what you lived when you were on your uh, 28 and uh, now in uh, in the 50s you you can't mess around I see you doing some kind of alchemy. Um, and, you know, if, if we did a, a like an actual channeling session, we'd go deeper into it. But to, you know, in fairness, out of to everyone else on the on the call with us, um, yep. are you doing some kind of alchemy? I don't know if it's with your hands or just with your body, but there, there, there are things awakening in your body because of the shift that you've made and the work that you've done with yourself. There are things opening and activating within your body within your DNA that's going to help, that's going to have you be able to do more alchemy magic type things with your body to, to the extent of like, um, not just the alchemy that I talk about when I bring love into something, but actual like telekinesis or, you know, something, something where you're transversing dimensions or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Uh, really funny. Uh, I'll keep it short. I had moments uh, like recent uh, this month or something uh, while I was doing my um, um, physical body uh, clearing stuff. I I tuned in then into like the spirit and I felt like there's no gravity anymore. I, I felt almost like floating. I was like, hey, man, this is I'm close to yeah. <laughs> uh, move my body in another location and uh, I saw that when you tune into the spirit, there's no more gravity. So that was just a little bit of uh, insight. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, there, there's experience, there are experiences that are like mind blowing, but I don't care about experiences. I just care how I feel and just clean my, uh, my emotional stuff. And Beautiful. this is my main job. Well, thank you for the inner work that you've done. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Yeah, pretty heavy, but um, yeah, I I appreciate uh, your words also. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Elisa has a question for you. Elisa, go ahead. Hi. Hi, Elisa. Hi. Um, I hope this question might have some relevance to other people. Um, it's about me, but I'm hoping there might be some relevance um, to my situation for others. Um, so we were talking about chronic fatigue a while ago. Um, I've had a very, very severe form of it. I mean, it began when I was about five years old, but um, I'm now 42. So, but it's been really severe. Like I was just 
I spent spent about 10 years just in a totally dark room in silence and I couldn't speak or, you know, it, it was really bad. Um, so I've done everything I can for my physical body. Um, obviously, I can speak now as <laughs> I'm, I'm talking. I'm still mostly confined to one room um, and I, I kind of have pain all over my body, um, quite intense all the time. And... I do a lot of work to deal with it um, mentally, I like dealing with emotions and I meditate, but my body seems to kind of reject every intervention. Even taking a deep breath is a massive problem or taking conscious breathing makes things worse. All the things that you would think would be good seems as if my body just rejects it. And the symptoms certainly over the past two years have just really escalated. Um, and yet I seem to be doing everything right. And I, I do hear this from other people. They say, you know, what's going on like with my body that, that things are so much worse recently. And so I just wondered if you could shed any light on that because I, I can't, any physical intervention just makes things really bad. So I have to work energetically. Even things like acupuncture, I have bad reactions to. So my body's like super sensitive to everything, sound, light, chemicals and everything. Mm. Wow, I feel for you, sister. Um, at least I feel this. <laughs> just, I don't even know how you made it into human form, to be honest. I don't know how your soul even, like, I don't know how to say it. I don't know how your soul even allowed itself to come into a human body because there's so much light and just, to squeeze it into this density, it's just been excruciating. I wanna say thank you for bringing your light here. Thank you for having the courage to stay in the human body with all of this light that you bring. We could ask your human body to calibrate to your light. Can we ask your human body if it's willing to calibrate to your light? I also have to mention there, there is a, a wounded side There are wounds about being in human form that need to be healed. But how does your body respond when we ask it to calibrate to, it, to your light? Um, it's really hard to say. I, um, I can't feel a lot. I think maybe I'd have to, maybe I'd have to sit very quietly, like on my own, and do it that way. Because actually I'm now in front of a computer and my body reacts to the electromagnetic stuff from the computer. So it can be a bit hard to, to know what's going on. Yeah. When, when you have time to be alone and with yourself, ask some questions like to your body. Um, body, will you please accept my light? Will you please calibrate to my light? Body, I'm committed to being here. So we need to work together. Can you show me what it is I need so that we can work together? Can you tell me what you need so that we can work together? We meaning the light aspect that you are. Ask yourselves, will you please open up and integrate the light? This is meant to be a gentle process. This is not meant to be like uh, a harsh process for the body. It's meant to be gentle. And so just make sure those intentions are known to your body and to your cells. Thank you. Yeah, that's, it's really interesting because I have actually been pretty sick since I was born, like, you know, with one thing or another. So it kind of makes sense. The other slight problem I have with um, my illness, I think it's with anybody's illness, that 
it seems like everybody is looking after me. Like I don't seem to be of service to anybody. And I always wonder how can you be of service when you physically can't do anything? Yeah, this is the part that the ego doesn't understand because it's not, it's not palpable, it's not perceptible to the ego. But what you are doing with your presence here on this planet is bringing in a very intense light that is hugely helpful for Gaia. It's hugely helpful for the collective. So again, I just want to take a moment to honor you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming here and bringing in all that light. Also, just on a practical level of service, you're giving opportunities to people to learn how to give, to learn how to be of service. And I know it may not seem like a great service from your perspective because your heart just wants to give, <laughs> but, but you are. Okay, thank you. And um, yeah, thank you um, for everything you've said so far to me and everyone else and uh, all the questions. Yeah, it's been brilliant. I appreciate you, Lisa. Wow. I'm just, I feel you, sister. I feel you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Micheline has a question or a comment. Yes, hello. Hi. I'm just... Um, oh, actually, before I'll I, just... let me interrupt one second. I'm so sorry. Do, yeah. Just interrupt. Are you okay? Do you need a water or a break? Or we... You're all right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Micheline. Okay, go ahead. No, it's, it's just that uh, I had some other comment to make, but now with uh, Alisa... I just, um, something came to me. I, I've just come back from the Dansville workshop, you know, and um, that was, uh, it, it was a very contrasting experience for myself, but um, I find that my clairs are even more open and I just have something to tell Elisa. So I'd like her to imagine herself on a crystal table and ask St. Germain and the Violet Light and Archangels, here I've got written uh, Michael, Raphael, Sandalfon, uh, Uriel, and Metatron to come to her now and to ask for balance and grounding. And I've also um, sent some, uh, let my swan, because my totem is a swan, and um, so it's, 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 a, it's a powerful yet graceful light. And I sent her some galactic Reiki and, um, and a rainbow pyramid. And so she, I've encased her in some sort of... Um, how does it look like? It, it looks like a, a pyramid of rainbow light. And so hopefully that will have some effect on her. Thank you. Michelle. You're welcome. Mm. Now, my comment had to do with food because I have something I'd like to share here. Maybe some people don't realize that food can be a triggering effect into the um, spiritual awakening. I, I know of a family there, there was a, this was years ago, and they've changed their entire life. Um, the father worked for a bank, and their, one of the daughters, and had four children, the, the eldest daughter became ill with cancer, and so they were looking for solutions for her, and the medical community was not offering any, and they changed in their food entirely and bought. He left his job, the father, and they decided to uh, settle um, on a farm, and it became a biodynamic farm. That was 25 years ago. And I know this family very well, and it's through food that the awakening came. And they're a powerfully spiritual family. Very, very, very powerful. This is where we had, like on July 15th, I, had a, I met with women, and we danced around this, this portal and whatnot, and I put some pictures up on the Hukula website. So I think that food is very important. And at the workshop, it, it was, there was an imbalance there. And that's all I have to say. And I was a little bit surprised. I had brought my own. <laughs> I, just, I just had this feeling that I just cannot not eat well. I, this is no longer a, a decision. It's been made for me. Uh, someone was saying there's no more messing around. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I really believe that. And this call for action, this is time to live what we learn because these words, they're nothing if we don't, if we don't act upon them. And, um, 
Thank you for that, Micheline. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah. You, you got to experience a contrast to reaffirm to you what you already knew. That's a very good thing. So mm -hmm. we could have a conversation about the food at the workshop. I wasn't there, but I could imagine. <laughs> so we could do that at another time. Yes, because, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That is all. Thank you. Perfect. Um, Lilypad has a question. There's a, there's a bunch of questions, so I want to go to them um, for you. You're sure you don't need a break? You're all right. I'm okay for now, thanks. Okay, good. Um, I lost Lilypad's question. Dawn, do you want to say what it is? I've lost it. Is he there? I gotta search for it. Just a second. Ah, sorry. We have questions coming from the. Um, go ahead, um, mechanical guy. Why don't you go first, and then we'll get her question after. Oh, this is uh, <laughs> this is yeah. I'm sorry for the confusion. Yeah, I'm yeah. confused. But go ahead anyway. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I have uh, yes. Let me just. Okay, is that okay? Um, I just wanted to thank Karen for inviting such beautiful. A spirit to um, to help us. Um, I just feel instant connection, and this is exactly what I am right now preoccupied with: is my health and um, just integrating my body with my spirit and with my life mission, which is also uh, to become a healer. And it's just such a passion of mine that. Uh, I've, I've always find creative ways to think about it and I, I'm hoping to practice it at some point in life <laughs> because I think it's just so invigorating to, to heal someone who's, who's uh, been impacted and cannot um, live a full functioning life. But at the same time, I'm understanding, you know, and, and joining your mission too, to bring balance to this world and, um, I can't help the feeling that that balance has to first be established in my mind. Like the, the picture of the world has to become clear in my mind first. And that, that the vision that everything is already there, the perfection is already there. We just need to find that angle where we'll see it perfectly. And um, I just wanted to ask what... Um, can I do to um, come closer to that picture? Keep healing yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, keep keep doing the inner work. Keep clearing and cleansing and transmuting. Keep bringing love into your being for yourself, mm -hmm. and and it will naturally. You'll just naturally radiate the healing. So you won't be you won't be healing anybody, but you'll be facilitating healing so that people can heal themselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the best way you can do that is just keep healing yourself. All right. I, mean, that's yeah. really, I know it's one of those trite answers, but that's that's it. That's the essence. You're doing it. I'm doing it. Okay, that's that's good to know. That's good to know. And also, I I seem to gravitate towards children, and um, just wanted to know, um, is is there a is there something that they would appreciate more from us from the grown ups um, at this point of time um, that 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 we can bring to them. Yes, see them as the magnificent wise beings that they are. Yes, them as the magnificent wise beings that they are. Acknowledge them, listen to them. Mm -hmm. They have so much to tell us. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much, Susie. I love your smile, and and I look forward to learning more about you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, by the way, Susie does do, of course, you do sessions and you have all kinds of workshops and everything. And in the chat, there are about three different links to you, Your what you gave to me. They're all there. So if you read down past her bio, that's all there. Um, so if you want to get in touch with her um, when our webinar does end, then you have all the you have all the tools to get there. Um, we have a question from Lily Pat, and she says, I've been trying to meditate to connect to the earth, and I'm not sure if I'm doing it right. I've been having wild dreams. 
any advice on how to connect with Gaia? Thank you. I don't think there's a wrong way to do it. Um, <laughs> but one of my favorite ways is to actually physically go out on the land, find a rock, find a place where you can put your bare feet on the ground and set that intention that you're connecting. Um, I'm wondering about the dreams you're having. I'm wondering if uh, you're transmuting some of the chaos that's happening on the planet, if that's coming into your dream world. If you want to comment on that, it's fine. If you don't, that's fine too. If she, if she can, she can, uh, she's not in the, in the room, but uh, she can type it in the chat and we'll pick it back up. Um, Cause I think you, I feel like you are connecting and that's part of what's happening with your dreams but I need a little bit more information, but that's just my, my first intuitive hit. <laughs> okay. Lily Pat, if you can type it out and then we'll, we'll take one more question and then we'll come back to you once we get that question. So Reinhold had a question. Go ahead, Reinhold. Yeah, this is Reinhard. Um, I have a question. Um, I usually, um, um, I feel when I uh, don't agree with the situation, mo mostly with mankind, uh, as we have now, and there are so many things not correct. And then um, I usually try to recognize the problem. And then if I cannot accept it, um, and I cannot support it, then I, I mentally say to myself, I, I will, I manifest it that it, this is that this will not be happening and um how is it um you know for me it it seems as if it's true that uh, it is like this it will not happen if i'm not agreeing to it so i this is something what i think i can do but what do you think what is this normally so uh, I even don't know how much power I have, but I know that if I mentally um, want to do it and make my manifestation, then it is like it is. So that's my question. What? How do you think how this, yeah. is, it could be very well for all other people, the same situation where they have to say to themselves, I don't agree. I will not have it. I manifest a different outcome. So I, there's two things that I that I feel. Uh, one is that you've set up a very strong harmonized matrix around you. You've figured out how to work with the harmonized matrix. So if yes. there's something you don't want to experience, you've, you've learned how to keep that out of your field. Um, my second thought is that there is sort of an overall uh, potential danger in that. Um, from the understanding of the larger perspective that everything is happening for a reason, everything's happening in divine order, even stuff that we don't like on this planet, there's a reason for it. It's serving to wake people up in some way. And so mm -hmm. if we would shut all of that down, um, it would take away from the journey in some sense. So then it's more, um, if I don't agree, I let it happen for that reason that it is a training ground, our earth. And, uh, but for myself, I don't want to have it. Yeah, you don't have to experience it, but it doesn't, it's not necessarily your role to shut it down for everyone else. Ah, uh, okay. But I, uh, it's okay when I shut it down for myself. You have to ask yourself that. You're yeah. very highly evolved. You already know the answer. Yeah, okay. So uh, then, I'm on the on my right way. Could I could I say that? Okay. Thank you very much. Brother, beautiful. You're yeah. very powerful. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Then somebody else will most probably want to ask something else. Thank I you. like what I learned. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Reinhard. Uh, this is a question from uh, Lily Pad about her dreams. She says, my dreams are all about the elements. She sees volcanoes, lava, strong winds, and huge waves, the ocean and the earth deformed, the ocean deformed, and, and, and very tall people. That's what she's seeing. Okay. Yeah, you are, you are connecting to earth. You're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> 
um, yeah, if I could invite you into um, when those dreams come through, just to bring a lot of love to yourself, to the planet, to the collective, because that's what's going to help transmute everything that's happening. All the all the chaos that Gaia is releasing, you know, she's processing all the chaos that's happening on the planet. And so, of course, there's going to be volcanoes and earthquakes and receding oceans and, and what, what have you. Um, so if, if you are willing to, when those dreams come through, to bring in just so much love for Gaia and for all the humans on the planet and for yourself, um, that will be tremendously helpful. So thank you. I'm, I'm just asking in the chat if there's any other questions from anyone in the room, um, because is there anyone else has a question? If you do, just stick a quick one in and I'll call on you. But I was just thinking as you were, do you need a little break? Oh, um, Lana yeah. has a question. Okay. Go ahead, Lana. I, I, but I have a question for you as we, as we go forward. Um, yes, I, I just wanted to, since you have so much experience with fatigue and, and overcoming it, um, in terms of the elements such as iodine, I've started to experiment with it lately uh, with good results. Um, would you recommend it or, or if yes, then um, is there anything that, that you know from your experience that, that maybe will save us some time? <laughs> um, no, actually I'm really not an expert in that regard. Uh, what I would suggest is to uh, either on your own tune in, mm -hmm. into your body to ask, is this, you know, is this for me? Is this what my body needs? Because our bodies are all so, so, so different. So I never can make a blanket statement like that. Um, and if you, if you're not adept at getting answers from your body, then find a practitioner who can do some muscle testing with you or some body talk, some body whispering so that you can discover, is this what my body needs right now? Is this something my body will continue to want in the future? Um, because Things are always changing. You know, what you need one day, you may be complete with the next day. Oh, absolutely. I am I definitely, my body is very vocal. <laughs> I get feedback right away. Well, um, and just one, yeah, 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 definitely. It's always, um, yeah, the back and forth. And just one more thing, as uh, since you mentioned that in the beginning, that um, it's a fatigue is an indicator of, uh, not ability to receive, but um, too much giving, but not balancing it. Is, is that my correct understanding? That's a generalization. That is, it's not that case. It's not the case for everyone, but that is typical for people with uh, mm -hmm. burnout adrenals. All right. So just be careful about listening to um, your needs. Yeah. And honor, honor your body. Honor yourself as a human. Honor what you need. A lot of self-care. We all need that. Whether there's fatigue or not, we all need that. Right. All right. Yeah, I just I just wanted to see them because it is, uh, the more I learn about this um, deficiencies in our foods and, and waters, um, it just makes me so uh, excited when I find that there could be a very easy solution that's yeah. right there, you know, and um, because we always think that we need something extravagant and expensive to fix our health problems, but um, it, it's probably not the case. And I, I just wanted to confirm my theory that those things are accessible to most people. Yeah, and, and I would like to offer to this part of the conversation that there are uh, energetics that when you get to a certain place in the journey that you don't even need the external supplements anymore. Um, so for example, right now for myself, there are times where the external supplements help and there are times where it's just an energetic shift I need to make within me. There's maybe a healing that I need to do with myself or um, just allowing more light to flow through. And then I don't need the physical nutrient because it's just... Right. I, I've that heard that... Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a, a Russian healer in my country who uh, was studying uh, the um, Vedic, um, you know, philosophies, and he said at some point you can get all the nutrients from the air just taking a walk in the nature. 
you will suck in everything that you need just from that walk, from the air, from the sun, from the, um, and and that's probably not a common knowledge. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know that, so <laughs> that's pretty promising. So, thank you for um, for adding to that. So I want to study more. Thank you. Yeah, the body's very powerful. The body has remarkable capability that we don't even understand. Kind of what Catalin was um, bringing into our awareness. The body has remarkable cap capabilities, and sometimes food isn't the answer. Sometimes the supplement. Mm -hmm or sometimes just the energetics and working with the energy is what we need to do. So thank you for-, for Magical, that. yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Udiyaman Shukla has a message or a question. I love saying his name. Um, he says, I've been feeling gr a great deal of energy in my body, but I have trouble squeezing it through my human form. Any advice on how to utilize my growing energy in the coming weeks? Um, now, I know this may sound uh, contraindicative to what I said to Elisa, but you don't need to squeeze your body through your human form. Expand. Expand your energetic field. Expand your auric field. And allow the energy to flow through that. Allow the energy to flow through your body. Remember, you're not, you're not holding on to the energy. Yes, you are embodying it. Yes, you are integrating it. But you're not like a container just filling up, filling up, filling up. You're a channel. So the energy, you want it to flow through you. So just expand your channel, expand your energy field, your auric field, and allow that the ever-increasing energy to flow through you. And then there's no squeezing. You don't have a problem trying to manage it. You just let it flow through. Very good. Thank you for that. You, you, you talked about muscle testing. Do you do that yourself or do you always do it with someone else? I actually don't um, use that modality. I don't find it too okay. effective for me, but yeah. I find that a lot of people really, it works well for them. Yeah, I, I tried to do it with my fingers, but then I always thought I was cheating, so I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> there's no cheating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's there's a question about orbs. Do you, do you, do you know anything wow. about orbs? Yeah. Um, Ecclesiastes, he said, he would I'd like to ask you about if light orbs are stationary or if they travel with a person? That's his question. Mm. Mm. I feel like they travel. I mean, I feel, you know, they have the ability to come in and out. So I feel, I feel like they travel and it's, um, yeah, they're, they're not like humans. They can, they can uh, teleport. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I just wanted to make sure if anyone else had a question as we're going forward. What I, what I was going to ask you, oh, Ian has a question. Go ahead, Ian. See, I think there's no questions and then they pop up. Go ahead, Ian. Go. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, for the past 15 years, I've had a, a sleep disorder and I thought I would bring this up since you seem to be to get, have insight on a lot of different things to where I would unexpectedly will go to bed and then end up sleeping for two, three, sometimes four days. Um, and this, sometimes it's rock solid. Other times I do get up, you know, we'll let my dog out, whatever, but go right back to bed. So, but it's a regular thing that happens every, you know, but sometimes it's every couple of weeks. Sometimes it's every week. Sometimes it's once a month. It's just very unpredictable. And I was just wondering what your if you got any type of intuitive hit on what could be causing that because it's caused serious disruption to my life. Are you um, are you grounded in your body? Are you in your body now or when I sleep? <laughs> just in general. I believe so. Is is there something you're you're trying to discover? Like why why are you go like you're going somewhere when you sleep? Where where are you going and why are you Those are the questions I've asked myself because in the beginning when it started happening it's like, you know, the questions are what is happening to me during this time? Where am I going? Um I I have no clue because I have no memory of any dreams. It's, I don't even, I wake up and I don't even know what day it is. 
And so I don't know if I'm, you know, I'm on a, I've been on the spiritual journey for the last 15, 20 years. Um, and yeah, there's a quest to, you know, any normal quest of, you know, trying to gain more information and knowledge. Um, but I'm not purposely going out of my body or mistakenly go out of my body to my knowledge. <laughs> and I'm, I'm assuming you've, gone to doctors and been tested and, and uh, still, do. still do many 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 doctors and they can't figure out what's wrong well i um so i have to admit ian right now there's something very strange happening here there's someone knocking on my window which is really bizarre i don't know why that's happening so i'm a tad bit distracted so i apologize <laughs> I was thinking your psychic window or <laughs> there's a window behind me and then someone's okay. talking on it. I don't this never happens. So it's really bizarre. Um let me just take a moment. Let me, uh, is it okay if I tune in a little deeper, Ian? Sure. Please. Okay. Yeah, this might take a while because it's pretty deep, um, but you're going you're going somewhere. It's almost like it's almost like you have another physical form somewhere, and you're like coming back and forth in between realities. Um, yeah, it's pretty big. I I I don't have the the bandwidth or the time in this you know in this container to be able to. Okay, okay, yeah. that's that's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that yeah. gives me a, a clue as to what's happening, um, because first it was blamed on seizures, and then those went away after a few years, and then, you know, so just there's just been a host of health issues, and that's been kind of the core of it. I know this isn't funny, but it's almost like, you know how sometimes um, a man has two families, and the one wife doesn't know about it, and the other wife doesn't know about it, and he, like, goes back and forth between... It's almost like you've got these two realities that you're going back and forth in between. Yeah, there's a lot okay. more. But yeah, too much for this. So it's a it's a cosmic answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank but you not, very much for that. Not to say obviously it's manifesting in a physical way. Obviously, it's expressing in a physical way. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I have adapted to it, but it was just, you know, one of those things is I'm trying to get an answer for still. So, yeah. so far you provided with the mo uh, the best answer I've heard so far. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad I could help. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, very different. Very interesting. I had, I had actually, he and I talked about this before. He had told me, and he, the thing that I find interesting is that in the moments when he has, where he does wake up, because he has a dog and he takes care of his dog and then he goes back to sleep and he has like no memory except for the moments he wakes up and then goes back to sleep and no memory. And then, but the, the, that can continue over several days, which what's interesting to me is that there's still that sort of responsibility aspect to his dog that does pull him back. Do you know? It's a grounding point here. <laughs> yeah. I think it's I, I, to me. I to me, it's just sort of a confirmation that there's still that there is that ability to transcend whatever it is, you know, to get back, to take some, to to be able to do something that you, for someone you care about. So, yeah, it's a very interesting uh, Ian we have in our group here. <laughs> yeah, very. I've never I've never come across this before, so I'm very fascinated. It's been going on for how long, Ian? How many years? Uh, about 15 now. Yeah. And did it start before with at this time of your spiritual waking at the same time? Was it that was a are they in right are about, they, roughly right about the same time? Like within probably within the year. Interesting. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah, you're, I see a movie in, in the, I see this is a good movie. I don't know what it would be. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have about 12 minutes left. Okay. So we're maybe, do, because you do beautiful meditations, maybe do you want to lead us on a, on a meditation that we can uh, maybe utilize some of the things that you've been talking about and also maybe giving some of the tools that you that, that you would like to offer, if, if you would. That's just a suggestion yeah. if you feel guided well, to that. I'm, I'm curious what would be most helpful for people. I feel like didn't really talk much about the tools. Do you want to take the time to talk about them in this time? I'm, I can, or if people feel it would be more helpful to do like a channeled meditation or a meditation, I'm happy to do that as well. So maybe we could get some feedback. Um, yeah. What do you guys want? What would be Channel most meditation tools, what do you want? To start typing. I start, I need typing. Oh, <laughs> channeled. Atlantis is channeled. This yeah. group is always going to choose channeled, I will tell you okay. right now. Well, that, <laughs> that came through first, so here we go. Okay. Um, perfect. Hopefully, if we could get a little break from the knocking, please. <laughs> I have feel like I'm going to look out and there's going to be some like ET being out there or something. I mean, that would be awesome. <laughs> 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 If you want to look, if we can, we, disclosure can come right here, right now, on live. Uh... I don't know how it's going to work because I have a curtain over the window. Oh, okay. And maybe they left. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there's no one out there. There's no one out there. So, okay. I don't know. Maybe they left. Okay. Maybe it was an energy thing. I don't know. It's really bizarre. <laughs> I didn't hear anyone walking on the porch, just like this knocking started. Oh. Like, <laughs> All right. So okay. let's, let's just space here. All we'll right. see what time Fay wants to share. Perfect. Okay. We'll see you when you come back. Ah, oh, dear ones, dear ones, what a beautiful group, what a beautiful gathering of beings. You understand, of course, dear ones, that there are many other beings gathered with you here today in the non-physical. And they are with you to support, and they are with you because some are curious and want to see what's going on. I thank you, dear ones, for your commitment to this amazing journey that each of you are on. And I would like to provide some validation to your journey, some appreciation for what you all have gone through, for what you all are going through, for living in the mystery and allowing the mystery to be your life allowing the mystery to be expressed through you. Many of you in this gathering are very highly developed in many ways. And so you are working with your human aspect in ways that many souls would not venture to attempt. I will say. And so as you experience things in your life that others may think are odd or out of the norm for human experience, you can have an understanding that what is truly happening is you are pushing the boundaries of being human. You are pattern disruptors for the human experience. For humans are capable of much more than they are currently expressing. And you, my dear souls, are on the leading edge of breaking the boundaries of what is possible in being human. That said, your human aspects still require 
the nurturing and nourishment to thrive as human beings. And so as this channel would tell you to eat pure food and to be hydrated, and I would also say to spend time in nature, to spend time developing self-awareness about your physical bodies, about being human, about your emotional bodies, about your spirit. Although many of you are already quite adept at understanding your spirit and your soul, and indeed, where you can expand your mastery is to understand yourselves as human. What it means to be human, what it means to expand, to evolve out of old paradigms. There is a grid that you have created with your gatherings here. And in your consistent gathering and meeting up in this way, this grid is strengthened each time. And this light grid provides stability for each of you as individuals, as well as stability for the evolving collective. It provides stability for your creations of light. And so I thank you, dear ones, for your commitment to your journeys, to each other, to these gatherings. In this moment, I invite you to feel my love. I invite you to open up your hearts and your cells. to allow me to merge with you as you are ready, as you are willing. And in this moment, to feel my essence, to feel your essence, and to allow a merge as you are willing and ready. Thank you, dear ones. Thank you. Beautiful message. What an amazing group. Yeah, you should come by more often. You're always invited. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be able to share what yeah. I Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, just so everyone knows, your what do you what do you have coming up uh, in the near future and if anyone's in Sedona, Arizona, I know a couple people are, they can come out and maybe see you or visit or so. Yeah. yeah, what do you have coming up? We have our Codes of Creation Retreat coming up in November. Oh, November wow. Through November 11th. So we're taking advantage of that 11-11 portal day. Nice. These retreats are always transformational and we go deep within this sacred space. They're very intimate. There's there's room for 10 and, and no more. So it's a very um, intimate container that we create here. And we're going to be working on our creations of light and what it takes to be a powerful creator and what it takes to you know really own our power. Right. And that's on your website. And which website is that? Because you have a couple of them. That's on creation. <laughs> temple.com it's creation temple.com slash retreat okay perfect so creation temple.com slash retreat yeah, i'll put it in the chat yes it's within the chat so again we would love to have you back uh you know at some moment so uh yeah definitely uh oops you put it there perfect 
Now, it's in the chat, and it's also in the uh, YouTube underneath the the chat. So, I have a question. When did you guys see when Catalin was talking? Did you see my screen flashing with light? Did you guys see that? I don't remember. I'm gonna have to go back and look. I'll was have to go back and look. I mean, there was some. Just as some feedback for Catalan also, there was some major flashing on my screen. Okay. I have to go back and look. I don't, I don't, I, I'm always, I've got 50 things going. So I'm not sure if I, I did, but maybe we did. And we can, we can definitely look back on the playback and see. It wouldn't yeah. surprise me. Let's just say I like actually that. shut it down because I've had flashing colors ruin a camera. And I'm like, no, 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 not my computer. You're not allowed to touch my computer. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I saw flashing while you were channeling. I thought I saw a flashing really? while you are channeling. I I thought, you know, uh, you have to check it then. Okay. This okay. is why not. Yeah. Okay. If I'm looking, I did not see, I'm, I'm watching simultaneously the YouTube chat. So there's a little delay. And as when you went like this, just a minute ago, there was a flash of light. And there's a nice aura that's created because you do have a nice background. So I can see your aura um, oh. against the background. I do see auras, but I can see it as well. And that has been lighting up the whole time since oh, you've been here. Yeah. That's, I don't know if that's camera or if that's just my own perception, but, I, but I'm seeing that. So maybe other people can. Yeah. What, and, what color do you see? Well, right now around your... <laughs> Right now around your head, I'm seeing more of your auric field just being expanded. And then you've got like white light coming in through there. Um, also too on your, your left shoulder, the one, yeah, if I'm looking at you, right? Your left shoulder, there's a lot of pink uh, in that area that's coming through. And then as a slash coming down like this over and across, I get I get waves. I get waves of like gold and then again white and gold and, and they're sort of alternating. That's what I'm seeing. And then also too here down here around your chin, you have green, like a green that's all actually matching a little bit the the thing that you have in your hair. It's in that same color, but it's definitely more, yeah, that higher. Yeah, that one, but it's here centered in your throat chakra area, which is interesting because a lot of times that's blue, but that just means I would think that you have your energy is coming out in the love. Uh, Bringing to the healing. Yeah, the love yeah. energy. And I can't really see you much more than. That's, a, that's so beautiful, Karen. Thank you for <laughs> telling me that. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. So. Yeah, um, they're just in the chat. Uh, Wendy from uh, Languages of Lights. She says, I'd like to express my gratitude and appreciation to you, to Susie, that you were very instrumental in her own process of self-awareness for her to put herself out there. So she said, she typed 1111, exclamation point, woohoo, my number, she typed. So. Oh, yay, Wendy. Yay. Love it. So thank you so very much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you. So honored. Yes. So I'm going to switch the camera just to me for one moment. And just to say that this has been the Saturday Human Colony Hukalo webinar. Um, next, actually tomorrow, we're going to have the Hukalo Extra, which is once a week, uh, excuse me, once a month on a Sunday. And tomorrow we're going to have C.W. Chanter on. He's going to be talking about all kinds of things that have to do with discernment in the spiritual world. And it should be a very interesting one-on-one -on -one conversation. You're definitely invited. You can uh, find the link in the Hukalo Facebook page. Also on Hukalo, we have the free channeling group that's every Friday. It's led now by Ian. He has just taken it over. And there's a Hukalo channeling group. And if you just look it up on Facebook, just ask to join the group. Um, if you would like to become a subscriber, just click down at the bottom of your screen so that uh, you can become a subscriber to Human Colony. And if you'd like to support Human Colony, you please become a member. Go to humancolony or hukalo.org forward slash webinars. And for $10 a month, you can help us pay our internet bills and uh, support some of the things that we're doing. So uh, if you can, much love all of the donations and all of the people who are donors are so instrumental in, in helping Human Colony uh, stay on the air. Also, just to remind everybody, Human Colony does have a book. It was written. Uh, it's a channel information from 
uh, Jim Charles, and it was written by Max, and it's come. It's called From the Galaxy with Love. Thank you very much, Don Parkinson, for, for reminding me. The name of it is From the Galaxy with Love, a Light Worker's Handbook. It's available uh, as a Kindle book. It's available as a hard copy, and it's also available as an audio book, and you can find that on Amazon.com, and you can find it on the Hukalo, uh website, and there's a link to purchase the book. So Everyone, much love. Also, next week, we will have Jim Charles back. So we'll see him on the first, but tomorrow is um, C.W. Chanter, and I hope to see you there. So namaste and much love, everyone. Thank you, Karen. Thank, Thank you, you, Susie, so much. Lovely to, Lovely see, to see you. Oh, did she oh, go? She's she gone. gone. Oh, she's quick. Oh, she's quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right.